You're listening to the Rich Dad Cryptoverse podcast, where the force of financial education merges with the power of cryptocurrency. Here's your host, Rob LeCount. All right, everybody, welcome back to the show. Just Jim and I hanging out today. We figured uh, this week, since we're recording this a little bit in advance, we would have a chit chat about some current news about regulation and executive orders and I know all the fun stuff that everybody loves to talk about, but I find it sort of interesting. I know Jim does too. How's your week been, my man? <laughs> Having a good week. How about yourself? Awesome Spring week. Spring time, man. It's nice. Yeah. We're getting closer to summer. Oh, yeah. We're already uh, mid uh, Oh, I forgot. I'm talking to you. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, 93 it. right now. <laughs> that was your high and today? I'm wearing a hoodie, by the way. Whoa. I didn't realize it was that hot. Gosh, it's hot. It's crazy. Yeah, but all is well here, man. I'm glad to hear everything's good on your side. Yes, sir. <clears throat> all right. So, like, what do we want to talk about? There's like some been some news about crypto and Bitcoin and executive orders and Biden and everything else. Where do you want to start? Yeah, you know, well, I'd say in the you know the last uh, the last you know couple of weeks. You know, we've had a lot of issues. I mean, I think you look at Europe um, in dealing with, well, I guess even let's let's start just macro wise. When you look at, we want to look at the potential environmental impact of, of Bitcoin mining and get into some of the stuff with blockchain technology. And you hear a lot of people, politicians, you hear a lot of news outlets talking about the negative deleterious effect that it has on the environment. So when you look at President Biden's, uh, you know, executive order from what was that like a month ago now, yeah, uh, and in there, ago. right, yeah, in there talking about blockchain and you know crypto technology, uh, and he's calling for United States agencies to you know produce a report, you know, in, in his words, it was the like kind of the, the potential for these technologies to kind of impede or to advance efforts to you know tackle climate change at home and abroad, right? And let's look at the impacts that, you know, all this stuff has on the environment. So he's calling for agencies to really do that. And I think it's important to have a conversation about it. And I think to set the record straight, maybe to eradicate some of the fallacies and the, uh, you know, erroneous thinking that is really out there in terms of that. So it's, it's good to have a conversation, I think, you know, that pertains to this topic. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Like you, you sent me over an article earlier. And like, so do you really feel like that there is a huge negative impact from the energy use from Bitcoin mining? Yeah, it's a good place to start, you know, and I think first and foremost, you have to admit that Bitcoin mining is an energy intensive process. So yes. anybody that right, anybody that doesn't admit that, you know, from the outset is lying to themselves because it's just not true. <clears throat> but while Bitcoin's energy consumption is is considerable, right, that doesn't automatically equate to it being a meaningful driver of climate change, which is Agreed. what we hear propagated right in the news. And I guess for those like in the audience that don't know, and when I say the word mining, mining is the process that, you know, we see Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies uh, that is used to generate uh, new coins and to verify new transactions. So we could say large decentralized networks of computers around the world, right, secure blockchains. And we've yeah. said before, think of like, uh, you know, what would it be? Uh, Microsoft, Excel, like an Excel sheet, right? So these are these are virtual ledgers that document cryptocurrency transactions. And yep. in return for contributing their processing power, miners are rewarded with new coins. So it's pretty much a perpetual cycle, right? The miners maintain and secure the blockchain. The blockchain then awards these coins and the coins provide an incentive for the miners to really, you know, uh, to maintain that blockchain. Yeah. So in understanding, right, how, you know, in understanding all of this, you need to know that Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, even Litecoin, I'm, you know, I'm not somebody that really follows much of Litecoin, but and a few other larger, you know, cryptocurrencies, they use what's called proof of work, uh, yeah. proof of work, I should say, consensus mechanism. Um, and you do have Ethereum and maybe people that are listening are going, well, isn't, you know, Ethereum moving from what's known as proof of work to proof of stake? Yes. 
Yeah. Right. But in really simple terms, right, if you hear that phrase and you go proof of work consensus mechanism, what does that even mean? So in really simple terms to distill it, a consensus mechanism is really just the process by which multiple entities are going to reach an agreement, you know, about a fact. And I guess you could just use like a sample, you know, a simple example. Let's say you're hanging out with you and I were hanging out with like, I don't know, six of our friends and we're deciding whether or not to go to. I don't know, a fast food restaurant, say like Wendy's or like Chick-fil-A. Hopefully you're picking Chick-fil-A with me and we're looking to just get a, a, a quick lunch, right? Yep. The consensus mechanism for that decision would just really be a simple majority vote or it could all just, you know, it could just be that we all want to, you know, vote to do the same thing and go to the same place. Well, cryptocurrency kind of works, you know, the same way, except instead of a group of friends deciding what to do for fun, it's a group of computers around the world deciding what crypto transactions are valid. So the proof of work uh, consensus mechanism determines which computer on the Bitcoin network gets to process a block of Bitcoin transactions uh, and earn Bitcoin, right? So yep. proof of work essentially is, uh, is meant to simulate real world resource mining, but in a digital way. Right. Hence why crypto is mined by specialist computers that are called miners and really trying to keep this simple for the audience. Uh, I think there are over like some are over one million Bitcoin miners around the world. I don't know what the exact number is, but it's it's a lot. And that's Literally addition insane. to the. Yeah. And that's addition yeah, to would, the millions of miners that are processing would, transactions. Uh, if you guys haven't seen it, anybody that's listening, just go to Google and type in Bitcoin mines and go to the images and you'll see yeah. what he's talking about. You know, it's funny is I'm like sort of browsing through this this report a little bit. And I noticed some of the things are like they're using like bombastic terminology by look at this image of all these servers and like just imagine the amount of power it takes. But what I find funny is if you look at those same servers for Amazon or for Microsoft, Azure or for any of these cloud based services, yeah. they far exceed so you're telling me that you know TikTok dancing videos are more important <laughs> than possibly creating a new monetary system like i i, I couldn't agree and, 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 and never, there's ever, a, yeah. i've never heard i've never i've never heard anybody say right. that TikTok is causing climate change ever or That's amazon so true right so true yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you hear politicians and news outlets and they, they constantly they spread the idea that when you look at single Bitcoin transactions, right, that one purchase or one sale to your point. Right. Or even one transfer. You know, you hear them say, like, I think it was Elizabeth Warren and saying, oh, that, you know, it's one transaction uses the same amount of electricity as the typical U.S. household uses in more than a month. And I think the estimate is somewhere like 50 something days, maybe 52, 53 days, something in that in that range. So it, it's interesting, too. They devise this per transaction uh, energy cost figure and then they extrapolate Bitcoin's transactional load to hundreds of billions per year. So it's just amazing to me that critics like will distort the basic facts about Bitcoin mining. So on the basis of like this misleading per transaction energy cost figure, they kind of assume that Bitcoin will grow repetitiously, right? Things are just going to repeat in its yep. energy footprint. And that's not the case. That's not what we're talking about. So as the, you know, in fact, as the Bitcoin network grows to support additional transactions, it doesn't require additional energy, just as it would be analogous to this, Rob. It's just as like the Federal Reserve Buildings electricity bill doesn't increase with every ATM withdrawal. Like it's right. like, it would, right? Doesn't that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So, so I, I think we see that pressure. sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's it it's no crazy, sense. man. And it's it's important for me. Like to your point too, it's important to remember that blockchain technology and and Web three are all about decentralization. And really, I think Robert has talked about this on the show many times. It's Bitcoin, and you look at crypto. It's a form of of currency that elites can't really control, right? Yeah, or anybody. So, theory, yeah, or anybody, right? right? Anybody I should say it that way, yeah. yeah. So, you know, though it's energy intensive, the process is what makes Bitcoin a truly decentralized monetary system. 
and the work being carried out by this global, again, this is a global computer network, is what allows Bitcoin to be controlled by, really for all intents and purposes, mathematical rules instead of humans, human actors that are vulnerable to government or, you know, corporate control. So it's, it, I just find that really interesting when you, you think about what's really happening behind the scenes. Bitcoin is a vote of no confidence, really, in the monetary and financial system that exists today. This pretty exclusionary system where we are beholden to the opinions of maybe a small group of people who kind of all think the same way. So I always look at this, man. I look at it like this is a generational movement against the status quo in favor of really a non-inflationary kind of hard currency, because that's what this is. Talking about it being like digital gold, right? It's not deflationary. It's in, uh, not, it is deflationary. I'm sorry, not inflationary. So for this to be the case, there's no central banker, right? You and I, We talk about this all the time on the show that can come in and alter the rules and, and privilege one certain group of people or, you know, in society, you know, at the expense of another, that really isn't the case here. So this is the core of the movement and this is why I love it. And, and you don't hear people talk about that enough in my you estimation. Don't. You know, right? and I, I will admit like they, they, I've been in Bitcoin mines. I've seen ASIC miners and they're yeah. loud and they are intense and they do consume a lot of power. I will say that there's probably, I'm not saying because of climate change, they should do this, but just right. out of like efficiency, cost efficiency, whatever, like get maybe a little bit more efficient or better at using different types. I know that there's some of these farms that actually are run off of solar and, and battery banks. So like you sort of hats off to those guys because I mean, they're just increasing their profits and actually sort of mitigating the issue that people are trying to pretend like is a problem. Yeah, that's good. You could, I don't know, like renewable energy is a good topic. If you want to like, we could jump into that. That's like an issue. Some you of just it kind is. of brought it up. You know, I, <laughs> I, I, no, no. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I go to, it was in COVID. It was like somewhere in the fall of, of uh, 2020, right? The year COVID hit. Cambridge University, they released um, a really interesting, like a, a, an interesting study. And a significant portion, they said, of Bitcoin mining uh, is powered by, you know, renewable energy sources. We don't really hear that, including wind, hydro and solar. You just mentioned yep. solar before. And the actual number, everything that, you know, uh, I've seen, that number ranges from 40 percent to 70 percent. Right. And, and again, this Cambridge study, right, you know, they have this consumption index and uh, they talk to that. And I, I, I saw another survey, too. Uh, that put Bitcoin's mining sustainable energy use at around like 55, 56 percent. And, I, you know, in my opinion, I think that's a figure that will continue to grow. And uh, I know the Cambridge study, they pretty much concluded that Bitcoin's environmental footprint, you know, remains marginal at best. And you're seeing really, man, you're seeing that, you know, make no mistake about it. Crypto mining has become instrumental, I think, in the growth of green energy. And I wish we'd hear more of that. And yeah. this is because, and this is part of the, I, I think the issue that we don't, again, that we don't, people don't hear about miners um, in, in looking to, they, they go where power is cheapest because cheap power means profits. It and does. it just so happens, right? Renewable energy sources like wind, solar, I don't know, even geothermal, hydroelectric, it costs half as much as, you know, say coal or natural gas. Agreed. So, hey, listen, and you probably know a lot about this, too. There are issues with renewable energy, right? Availability, yeah. infrastructure. So I'm not here. We're not here having this Cloud. conversation. I'm saying they're all perfect. What did you say? Right. Clouds. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like absolutely. Weather, snowstorms, rain, like <laughs> it, it, the cost of, of like, Yes. The cost of, of building like a, just even a hydroelectric plant you know, in the middle of nowhere and building the infrastructure required to power the, the nearest towns or cities is not always economically viable, uh, mm. essentially, you know, especially if there are other alternatives. But um, when you add Bitcoin mining into the mix, like just using hydroelectric as an example, these plants are not only able to quickly cover their costs of construction, but they're also able to expand their operations much faster than they otherwise could. Uh, conversely, like solar and wind power can be generated almost anywhere, almost anywhere. And they are yeah. you know, much easier to hook up to uh, an existing energy infrastructure. 
So it's important to just note that, right, about, you know, green and, you know, renewable energy sources that are that are also out there. Yeah. And I mean, there's a lot of things like I have a, a, a helium miner in my window behind me. You know, I've mined, I mined yeah, Ethereum. I know, you've told me. Yeah. yeah. Right. I've got a, a cool. Chia rig in the basement that is a proof of space and time. So, <laughs> like, they're trying oh. to find out all these, like, and that thing burns like $4 in electricity a month compared to my Ethereum rigs Jeez. that were like two or 300 Oof. bucks. Yeah. yeah. But, Absolutely. I mean, also, those networks aren't amazing. So, um, that's true, too. That's true. So, too. do you think that this is a ploy to, like, I don't know the best way to put this. Do you think this is the traditional financial system trying to tighten the screws on a scary new beast that might take over their lifelong or geez, I don't even know what it would be at this point. Um, do you think it's just a threat? Do you think that's what they're concerned about is the threat? So they're creating this FUD around it. I don't, I, I don't I know. I, yeah, I don't think anybody knows for sure, but I, I think there's some of that there. It's the fear of change. Right. When you look at you just look at history, being a student of history and you look at whenever something comes in and is, is quite disruptive, you're interrupting the status quo. Right. And you see a lot of the alarming headlines. You know, I think they, a lot of them come from a, a, a basic lack of understanding. Even just we're just talking about Bitcoin and how it works. You might hear these startling claims like Bitcoin, you know, is going to require 14 times the world's total electricity just to process 1 billion yeah. credit card transactions that take place every day, right? So, they, you know, a lot of times you hear this kind of stuff and they, you know, con they conflate stuff. They'll conflate the energy cost of Bitcoin mining with the, the, the cost of transactions, you know, and with credit cards and things like that. But if you were to compare the energy consumption of Bitcoin mining to that of, I think it's interesting to even look at like the current financial system, right? It is yeah. estimated to be less than the power that is used by physical bank branches in the United States. And I'm not even, listen, I'm not counting all the energy from, say, uh, corporate offices, ATMs, servers, uh, you know, the, the massive regulatory infrastructure that's built around legacy finance. Yeah. You know, and, I mean, you have and, robo traders, you have high yeah. frequency trading. All Absolutely. those things require a lot of technology to run. So, yeah, it's not like... Their 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 uh, carbon footprint is zero. You know. Yeah, a hundred percent, man. And it's it's kind of funny too. And I think Robert would appreciate this. And we listened to him, right? And and him sharing his wisdom on things. But I think he'd agree that since 2020, the the Fed's money printer has been quite busy and using uh, a, a ton of energy, right? Would you yeah. agree? Oh yes. my goodness. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, so add, uh, add, in, add in decimal places to you know, bank uh, systems, but I, listen, all, all, you know, all this infrastructure really, it isn't required for cryptocurrency and all the rules and rules and regulations are they're kind of built into the code itself. But crypto offers, I think the most energy efficient financial system in the world. And it does much more than, than finance too. And, yeah. but the big thing that you have to get into is and I, I hope you don't mind if I get into it. It's it's the reports that have been out there, um, and and the one that is talked about, I think the most, is about Bitcoin's growth. Um, really, I guess being the catalyst, we could say, for pushing global temperatures above what they would call, you know, the tipping point of, of two degrees Celsius. So it's all that's some. Fault. Yeah, right. I, I I think you kind of hear that, you know. That message that's out there, and it's important to maybe delve into that a little bit and eradicate some of the you know the fallacies that exist yep. and, and why that's really not true. Um, I think it was 2017 where Newsweek they predicted that Bitcoin was on track to consume all of the world's energy by 2020. We now know 2020 COVID hit, but really interesting and uh, a lot of the information really at the end of the day. So that was that to me, I laugh at something like that, but a lot of the information I think that we see that's out there and it's cited Rob time and time again, it, it comes from a 2018 uh, like two or three page academic journal. It was published in nature's climate change journal. And it was also trumpeted by like the New York times and other, you know, news publications uh, the paper said that Bitcoin's growth, I know, that the paper said that Bitcoin's growth could single-handedly push the global temp temperatures above, 
right? What they said was this, this tipping point of, you know, of two degrees Celsius adding that and this two degree level, I'm not a scientist, man. I don't, you know, profess to be an expert, but scientists say that this two degree level is significant because that's really kind of the temperature at which, um, you know, the planet's coastal cities and uh, shorelines would see a lot of serious flooding. So effectively, mm. you know, it, it makes some, it, it, this, this journal made some very questionable assumptions about Bitcoin, I think, to drive this extrapolation of Bitcoin, again, Bitcoin's future carbon footprint. And yep. it finds like this cartoonish like figure that Bitcoin could increase the world's temperature by two plus degrees is incredibly inconsistent with the way, you know, uh, Bitcoin works. And I should even say this, there is, you know, we should link, there's a really good TED talk by an energy uh, economist and even me like talking about some of the stuff, he was very helpful. You know, when I was learning on, you know, in my journey, the first time I'm looking into this and uh, his name is Lars Dittmar and we should probably post that for people. And he published an article too, aside from the Ted talk, debunking the stats that are in this frequently cited uh, source. And man, I can't tell you how many times politicians will go. This is like their go-to article. And uh, his TED talk is, I think it's called Bitcoin, the final nail in the coffin for like climate change, something along those lines. And it, it's really good. So, right. yeah. And it, that yeah, over to me and I'll make sure it gets to our, uh, our producer. You know, it's funny. Is like, Go ahead. I'm listening to you talk about this, right? Energy yeah. construction. Uh, you stop me. Yeah. I'm thinking of our pre-show like sort of briefing and what we were talking about, you know, you just went to... Disneyland with your family. We're talking about. Don't remind me. It's a, it's a small world. <laughs> like I imagine, like all the animatronics and the little boat in the water and the people running. Like I assume that that consumes some energy. But I know, like, sorry, Disney. I don't know a lot of people that <laughs> that it's a small so world true, made their man. life better. You know what I mean? It's a distraction <laughs> from the crap in your life, and it's a really really bad one. You want to, hey, how about this, right? So I'm laughing. My wife signs us up for uh, the, the safari. I'm an animal world, planet, whatever you call it. I'm sorry if you're like a Disney enthusiast, a Disney nut. I got the name wrong. I don't know. I'm at the animal world, right? So they're in, incredibly environmentally. It's really a zoo for all intents and purposes. It is. So yeah. we're taking this like special safari trip. They have a ride and we're doing the special tour. And I just kind of sat there and laughed to myself. They're talking about how everything going green and doing this for the environment, what's emitted into the you know, atmosphere. And then I'm laughing as truck after truck goes through with, with, with you know, loads of people and the, the, their gas powered vehicles. So I'm just laughing the, the amount of time the park opens up at say eight in the morning through through dusk, I don't know, like maybe late at night and, and, and all these, you know, cars are going through and what they're doing for the atmosphere. But of course they conveniently don't mention any of that. No. So it yeah. reminds me too, like of, uh, what's his name? John Kerry, like the yeah. huge right. like advocate for climate change. And I'm not trying yes. to get like way too political, but no, like just right. on its face, that dude probably has like, I don't know, he could probably Google search what his carbon footprint is, but he flies private everywhere is that necessary like do you need uh, to be don't, places don't it's get me started crazy. man even yeah, like not, even a lot of the actors no no but i mean like right a lot of these famous prolific actors and actresses and they're all advocates for this right and then you see how they live their lives and you're like exactly the private yeah. jets and such and you're yeah. like well that's you know kind of antithetical to what you're trying to promote here and that you know what you're right talking mega about, yachts so. and like a fleet of you know private aircraft. Did you ever see Bez did you ever see Bezos' yacht? Dude, what's this the thing he just built in like what is man. it, England or whatever? They have to remove yes. a bridge. <laughs> it's like, come on, man. You know you got too much money when you can get a place to remove a bridge <laughs> with your boat that you want Dude, to build. That is a great a hundred percent, man. That's a great point. But yeah, no, it's 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 a really it's a great topic to talk about. Because it is real. But at the end of the day, that's what I just wanted to, sh you know, it's good for us to share some of this information, I think, with people. And hey, listen, we always say do your own research, you know, go yeah. look at stuff yourself. But the one that you have to look at is this article from 2018, because that's the one they pull, you know, the, the people that say it has a negative impact, you know, on the environment and the climate and, you know, what it's doing. I'm not saying, again, there are issues mm -hmm. at play, but um, I think they have to look at too. And a lot of this, like the fact of the matter is, Crypto mining equipment. So you say you've seen it right up close and personal. Yeah. It's becoming more and more efficient. 
right? And, and there's there's a massive incentive for miners to invest in energy saving technology. So th- I yep. love that the authors of the article from 2018 they don't take into account of I don't know maybe they don't realize that the amount of energy that they assume Bitcoin mining will require in the future would make it unprofitable to do so ultimately. You know, right. because these Bitcoin miners would spend more on energy than they would than they would from earning from BTC and the transaction fees that they would get from each block that they actually mine. So, yep. listen, man. I, and- What's cool about that is like it really shows you like if you read headlines and look at things on their face, like, yeah, yeah. sometimes they sound bombastic. Sometimes they sound horrible. But if you do your own research, if you dig a little deeper, if you look at the evolution of technology and less energy consumption and more efficient chipsets and all the other things that are compounded onto that, you'll really find out that those things are just sort of propaganda, in my opinion, to leverage. Like we have this study of one mine with three people like five years ago. Like, okay. Exactly. Hey, can I leave? Can I say one more thing? I promise I'll mm-hmm. stop because it's it, to me again, it's a really cool topic and, and one there's a lot of debate about. So in a lot of ways, there's no easy answers, you know, on all this and there's, you know, differing opinions. But uh, critics also, I think they tend to ignore the fact that miners are incentivized to use energy that would otherwise go to waste. And I, if you ask the average crypto person or, or even, you know, person that's really um, against this, right, and, and they probably wouldn't know anything about that. And that's because electricity is hard to transport over long distances, while Bitcoin mining can happen really anywhere there's Internet access, so these miners are going to gravitate towards energy sources, you know, that have excess capacity. So if they have to go to the Amazon or go to the Congo, Siberia, Antarctica, they'll go wherever the cheapest energy is. So the bottom line is, you know, these miners, they're going to they take energy or using energy that nobody else really wants. And even in yeah. the Western United States, you're in the West. I'm not. I'm in the East. But mobile Bitcoin miners are already running on electricity derived from unused natural gas, you know, from oil wells that can't be captured because there's no, they don't have pipelines to carry it. So, it, you know, there's a lot to this, man, that people, I just think, have no idea about. I, you know, and it, uh, this is, like I keep going off on tangents. I saw a, no, I, I don't know if it was an article or, or TikTok or whatever the heck it was, but there was some kid that was going to superchargers with his Tesla and wired yeah. his mining rig into the trunk of his Tesla and just left it plugged in and was sort of because he gets free Tesla or like supercharged. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. So he's using his free what? energy from that to mine in his trunk. Oh my that's interesting. I have an electric car. I have yeah. an electric car. It's hard to go back to gas, but it is yep. interesting even too. You hear people talk about that, but you know how much energy it takes to actually build the cars? Yeah. So you ever seen we, a lithium we, mine? I exactly. Yeah, you beat me to it. Yeah. And you right. know your so tires are made from crude, crude oil. Your plastic <laughs> door panels are made from crude yes. oil. Like you can't yep. make any of that stuff from wind. Yeah. But so, I, I, I think the message we want to leave people with is there's a lot more to the story. And if you spend a little bit of time researching, I think you'll find out that there's not a lot of truth kernels of truth to these assertions that you hear yep. by a lot of politicians and, and uh, the media in terms of all the energy that Bitcoin is expending. So yep. it, it does remember, does use a lot of energy, but go ahead. Remember, Jim and I are not financial advisors. We just like mm-hmm. talking and hope people like to listen and yep. do your research. Like this is the whole thing is just about, we want you to be educated. I want to be educated. Like I spend an inordinate amount of time studying stuff like this during the day. So when I see ridiculous titles or headlines, I'm like, okay, I know what that is. Clickbait. Yeah, it's clickbait, yeah. right? Yes. Get people to just, yeah, absolutely. Also some ads in your, your blog and like, good for you. Okay. A hundred percent. Yeah. Awesome. I think Robert, I think Robert would be proud of us with this episode. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. He's, he's pretty much <laughs> against any of the I know, I know. Uh, baloney that's happening with everything actually if you follow him on twitter yeah <laughs> um, yes sir. all right well i think we have like beat the renewable yeah energy. i think we're good bitcoin is going to be the demise of the world <laughs> civilization yeah. it's gone like we're screwed it's, it. um, it's over let's let's go on and like i the this week i think i have maybe like just one project i want to mention is there anything you're looking at this week what's 
What's been on yeah, your mind? We haven't so, talked for like eight days, actually. Yeah, so I, I do. And uh, I have a couple. And the first one I'm going to share with you, uh, this is called uh, Phantom Network. And uh, Phantom Network is, is super interesting because this is like, it has a retro. So this is an NFT project, right? Look at how many followers, by the way. Take a look at that. 258,000 wow. followers. Some amazing people in the space are following this project. Uh, it's a retro themed anime, you know, art project. Uh, it gives me a little bit, and this may sound crazy. You followed the Zuki, by the way. I wish we had more time to yeah, just even too. get into this. Hitting like a 30 ETH floor, people getting wow. airdrop. They didn't even have to mint the airdrop. And we started a little bit late. If we were a couple of weeks earlier, we could have possibly been talking about Azuki. But yeah, I mean, and, and the, the floor on their airdropped uh, NFTs is like five ETH right now. So absolutely an astronaut. 30 ETH is what? Like for 30 people? ETH is the floor for, for Azuki. How much is right that now. though in US dollars? So right in US now. dollars, we're talking about nine, that's well over $100,000. Yeah, and with the airdrop, so you're looking at like I don't know, 120, 130, maybe a little bit more, thousand dollars. If you, you, that's the floor, and that's somebody, crazy. yeah, and I by think the way, that, for everybody, the floor price yeah. for NFTs is what the cheapest one is selling for. Yes, essentially, is the floor. Yeah, so getting back to this one, this Phantom Network uh, Project PXN, really cool stuff. I think what they have, um, they've actually partnered with um, a Korean rapper. Uh, his name is Dumbfounded. He has like 150,000 followers. I think that's kind of a cool collab. Uh, they're minting at some point at the end of April. That's when they're they're launching their project, if, if you don't know what that means. Uh, date hasn't been set in stone. The supply is, is uh, 10,000. Um, and they're building out utility to be ready on Mint, which I really like. And we always talk about how important they have. Community is really important to them and utility is important to them. So this whole ecosystem is going to be powered by what they're calling their PXN tokens. Uh, and they're, they really do have utility that's built out, they say, for three years whether it's, you know, earning and burning mechanisms and token sinks. And we, I don't want to get into all, but they really have their act together. It's a platform filled with uh, utilities that will support uh, users on their Web3 journey. Uh, and they offer really, in, in essence, they're trying to give people a, a new lens, really, you know, on the Internet. And it's their vision, really, of how life online is going to look in the future. And they, that's, that's what they're trying to bring to people. I think this is going to be wildly successful. Uh, they're onboarding partner projects to test and use the platform in the future. They want to really expand to outside of just the NFT space. I think they will. I think they'll be successful. And they want to really reach you know hundreds of thousands of people in the crypto space and beyond. So this is a project that people should really check out again. When you have 258,000 followers, I mean, that's really kind of saying something. So that was the first one that was that was the first one that was on my list. And then here's number two. Uh, this is mind blowing universe. Uh, and this is another wild one. Now the artist that is here, if I, if I click on this, you can see that still, right? Yeah. Look at the artist here. He has 870,000 followers. So, uh, he's in, this is an Indonesian project. So this Indonesian artist, uh, it's, it, is really incredible, has quite a reputation, uh, it kind of reminds me of another project, anybody that really follows the space closely, of Coolman's Universe, who has an artist that was very big in Web 2. This guy is kind of the same thing, has a big following, and he's created comic strips since 2015. He has a really strong community in the Web 2 space that really supports him. So um, this is the kind of project I think people, you know, again, we don't, with never any financial advice, but I think the project's going to do really well. And a lot of people I think are investing. Sometimes you invest in the, in who's running the project, right? So you here's an artist. Yep. Yeah. Right. So this is a project where people are going to invest in the artist and what he brings to the space and what he wants to do. Some of the people uh, have worked on another great project called Karafuru. 
and uh, they're working on, on Mind Blowing too. So this is one that I'm really excited. They have amazing advisors, including uh, a guy named Shan from Gajira, which is, has done incredibly well, uh, yeah. and some other big names. They have big collaborations. They're connected in Web2. I mean, when you look at all their followers on YouTube, their YouTube channel, like over like 300,000. So it, it's another project that I have my eye on. Um, in the NFT space, I think it's going to be good. And then finally, I'll go through this one really quickly. Uh, the last one I wanted to mention is The Possessed. And mm. here it is. I'll show you their That's Twitter great. account. Yeah, this this one's wild too. Look at this. So uh, look, all of them. This one has 130,000 followers. I don't think they're launching for, you know, for anytime soon, I should say. On that last project, I should say too, if anybody's wondering, um, in, in getting in on mind blow and you can't even get in the discord yet. It's closed and they have that many followers. It's organic growth, which is, you know, pretty stunning to me. Uh, and then I look at this one, the possessed really cool. Can you see this? If I change my screen, you see this? I all I still see is, uh, is it possessed right. or pissed? It looks like, uh, so you see the website. So maybe you don't see the website. Let me, let me throw the website up there. So when you look at the website, I just quickly walk you through this. Um, you can see some of the other things that they have going on that are just, you know, kind of neat, right? You see this here. I think they're going to be the first 10,000 K, uh, fully animated project to hit the NFT space. And there's two guys, the, uh, the, the partners here, one guy is really in charge of development and the other guy, the artist, these guys are, um, they're going to, they're, they're docs too. So it's not like, you know, they're anonymous, which is always important. So it says here, what is the possessed? 10,000, you know, animated NFTs, what you get with it. Every, I think this is kind of cool. Every possessed NFT will include a fully animated character with two static profile pictures, one of each state blessed and possessed and holders will be able to select which state uh, to use as their profile pic. Oh, wow, that's cool. So yeah, yeah. So, and really cool. This is another one that's growing organically. There are a lot of people in the space that are big names that are following this and it's getting a lot of attention. And they're not even, they're not even advertising. They're not even really looking for this. I think the art is really clean. I think the project's going to do incredibly well too. So I, I think these are three projects that everyone needs to put on your radar. If you can get in the, Rob always says, get in the discords, right? Follow yeah. the community, become part of the community. So, ask questions. Ask questions, man. That's it. Yeah. That's it for me. So uh, I hey, will stop you, sharing you my send screen. Send me over these links. I like this one. You know, this one has, uh, I, hopefully, like, the founders or whatever aren't offended by this, but it has, like, I don't know if you watch Rick and Morty. Oh, yeah. No, no, absolutely. I freaking love <laughs> Rick and Morty, and that has, like, sort of a Rick and Morty. I mean, 100%. Here, man. That's this. a great, like, that's a great, a, that's a great comparison. A starry night. Oh, there Rick it and is. Morty. <laughs> you got to love stuff like that. Where did you get that? I love it. Don't. You're wow. Not, at the oh, fair, man. dude. Did you really? <laughs> Come on. You're kidding. Yeah, dude, there's some like that's where I got my Hulk. Like they, they have some like cool artists that do reprints of stuff and I love it. Like I got Thanos in, in uh Deadpool. Yeah. I love Deadpool. I love it. Can't that's probably nice, see man. Thanos. But... That Hulk looks sick behind you, by the way. Yeah. That Hulk looks sick. This is probably my favorite, and then we can go away. <laughs> no, that's cool. People get I, to see I inside your home. Man. Right, I love this. Right, Stan that's, Lee. That's sick. I don't I know if it. anybody knows, but Spider Man is Stan Lee's first character. So I thought that's that that was cool. really cool. Yeah, that's good. Stuff, I don't have man. a lot. You know what? I only have one uh, project that I actually just want to give a shout out to. I'm checking out their their Open Sea yeah. right now. I mentioned them a while back, which is at Alpha Kong's Club. Yeah, they sure. just finally released their utility. Their token is was released, I think, about two weeks ago. It's nice. Well, it'll be probably like four or five weeks ago by the time this comes out. And the floor price is almost pumped up to an ETH, which is nice. So the project is doing really well, and I believe in it because I love silverback gorillas. So <laughs> you do. Okay. You always talk about I do. those. <laughs> I do. I talk about them incessantly. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> I have an obsession. I love, I love All it. All right. Well, I am done. Hey man, always always enjoy these shows. Yes, it's always fun, dude. Alright, see you next week. Alright, man. Be well. Talk soon. You too. Man.